All right, so uh, I'm ready. Is everyone? It's 4:49. It's scheduled for 4:45. So this talk is designed to be a really quick overview of doing something that's at least minimally complex to be uh, interesting with ACA streams. I've done a few, and like where I spend a lot of time getting into how ACA stream works, and then I just like, oh, here's how you parse a CSV file as a stream, and no one really cares about that. They can do that in a lot of simpler ways. So for this talk, I'm going to build a really small WebSocket or a uh, WebSocket server that just accepts WebSocket connections, publishes all of the WebSocket messages received via that connection to uh, Kafka via a single stream. And this is something you might use if you want to uh, collect metrics from uh, your front end pages from JavaScript or something. And yeah, so it originally counted in under 100 lines of code. I've refactored it a bit, moved stuff out to classes. If you counted all the important bits, it still wouldn't be, but don't hold me to that. Right. So first, ACA streams, right? Not going to go over all of it, the basics. Uh, it's built on top of ACA. It uses ACA actors to actually run stream processing graph nodes. It uses the reactive stream standard. That's something uh, people from TypeSafe, Twitter, Netflix, other companies have been working on. Uh, might, like fingers crossed, get added to the uh, Java standard library. It's a really big initiative. The whole point is that a lot of people use it. You have a lot of interoperability by using it. Uh, so you can use streams of Kafka messages, streams of messages over WebSocket. You can do high-level I.O. You can write a server that's just basically a transformer for a, that, it, that consumes a stream of HTTP requests and uh, produces a stream of HTTP results. You can do low-level network I.O. You can actually just stream over a socket, UDP, TCP. You can stream uh, to the input or output stream of a process. So you can work with the files, with, or sorry, with uh, processes. Like You can actually call grep and like throw a bunch of strings at it and have it filter it if you need to do so. Or you can create just a little runnable that mimics grep, mapping over the uh, input stream and producing to the output stream of the Java process. And you can work with files, like, like I said. But you can also work with S3 local files. In both cases, they're just streams of bytes, right? One of the cool, thing about, cool things about ACA streams is that you can sort of abstract over exactly what's happening. You just have a source that produces a stream of elements of some type. You have a sync that consumes elements of some type. You have a flow that transforms ele elements of some type and some other type, et cetera. Right, so let's get started. So here's the goal. Like I said, many WebSocket connections, single Kafka topic, something that consumes all of those streams of messages. And here's the event class that we'll be, we'll be working with. Well, I've omitted all the serialization, deserialization boilerplate, but we'll both basically both be using or be using JSON in both cases. So over the wire from WebSockets, it's pretty simple, right? JSON is the native format of JavaScript, so we'll just be taking events in that format. Then we'll be publishing them to Kafka in the same format, JSON. That's a lot simpler. We don't need to work with Avro, Protobuf, Thrift, though we could. And that'll just help us uh, boost through that stuff. So, boilerplate, as always, right? So we're working with an actor system first. That's uh, where we're going to get the actual actors in which we run the ACA stream streams. Uh, we'll be using the dispatcher from that as an execution context. And the new thing, the thing that you probably don't recognize, we'll be using a materializer. That takes the act ACA actor system as an implicit parameter, and it uses that when you give it a blueprint describing your stream processing graph. And these are all uh, immutable, functional, composable, et cetera, blueprints. Uh, it'll create a uh, actual running stream processing graph using the actor system. Right. So these will always be in scope. If you wonder how something's working and it doesn't seem to have all the context required, it's probably pulling something in from this implicit context. Right. So first, we're going to need some service to publish to Kafka. Obviously, we need to publish the messages received via WebSocket to Kafka. We're also going to want to look at Kafka, make sure the messages get there. And later, we'll be doing a little load testing. So uh, I had some trouble uh, getting everything working with the screen size. Um, this is Most of this is boilerplate, though, really. Uh, so publish, for example, it creates a sync using um, the reactive Kafka library and just uh, sort of abstracts over a lot of like the producer properties and wraps incoming messages in producer message of E, uh, which is just the uh, class used for messages that are produced that holds various metadata, keys, et cetera. And it can serialize anything that has an implicit type of writes. So that's just used by play JSON to say, I know how to turn an instance of type T into a JSON uh, object. And then vice versa for consume, anything that can be read from JSON, it can be read from Kafka, and there's a little more uh, boilerplate there with consumer properties, the topic from which we read messages, the group ID under which we read uh, messages, deserializer, et cetera. Right. So I've also added some uh, little ASCII art graphs that are designed to show for uh, what these different stream processing graph components look like at the conceptual level. 
So publish events from the Kafka client, uh, you can see there, that's a sync. It consumes events, uh, objects of the event type that I showed you earlier, publishes them to Kafka. And consume events, it is a source. It consumes events from Kafka and uh, emits them to be used by some other component in a stream processing graph. Now, these aren't runnable graphs yet. They're just <laughs> components of graphs. You notice they have like hanging inputs or outputs. We wouldn't be able to actually use these to create a running stream processing graph. So, uh, ideally, we could just, for every incoming WebSocket connection, connect it to uh, publish events, but that would be very inefficient because then for every connection, we would have to uh, create one Kafka producer. There'd be a lot of uh, wasted resources there. So what we're going to do instead is use source queue, right? Uh, so it's a very simple trait. All it is is something that can be offered elements of type T, returns a future Boolean, True if the element was added to the queue, false if it wasn't, fails if the, underlying, the thing underlying the queue has failed. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a Kafka publisher graph that consumes element via, elements via source queue and uh, publishes them to Kafka. Then we're going to run that graph. Uh, this has also snipped slightly off. Um, anyway, this is the same as the uh, publish events that you saw earlier, right, right, uh, right there. Um, Right, so what that does is it constructs a buffer, size 1024. Um, if it overflows, it'll use a back pressure strategy and connects that queue via that buffer to the Kafka. So you can see the ASCII art graph here. Source queue event, message, or events go from the source queue to Kafka with the buffer as part of the uh, source queue uh, source. Right, so then, as I said, you can't see that here because it's, uh, yes. So this creates a runnable graph. So this is very similar to a process in uh, Runo's earlier talk, uh, sort of, or more of like a task. But anyway, it's a thing that can be run that gets you a source queue of event, more, more like a task, actually. Uh, so then in the next line, we run it. We use the um, ACA streams materializer uh, implicitly. And we get a source queue, because that's the uh, materialization parameter of the runnable graph. So we've created, we've defined a graph blueprint that looks like this, then we've run it to get our actual source queue. We're gonna be throwing things in that source queue uh, to publish elements from WebSockets. And I'll explain why that's necessary later. Right, so first we wanna sync that'll write every element it consumes to the source queue. We do that by just taking a flow of event, mapping over it with map async, which takes a function from, T to future, from A to future of B. In this case, we're just using source queue.offer, and then using and then to register a listener, basically, because if that returns uh, false, that means our message has not been enqueued. And we could also fail based on this, uh, but that's for this, uh, I've chosen just to do this. And yeah, so we could also add throttles, buffers, et cetera, to the queue writer, for example, to throttle the amount of messages published by any WebSocket connection per minute. Uh, for again, for simplicity, that hasn't been done. And we take that map async, currently a flow, and connected to a sync that just ignores any incoming elements, because we don't really care about the Boolean values, except in that they s indicate that a message was not added to the buffer. Right, so at this point we've created a sync that consumes elements of type event and publish the source queue event sync, right? So next thing we need to do, we need to parse messages that arrive via WebSocket. So for that, we have a flow of message. That's the representation of WebSocket messages. It can be binary, it can be text. In both cases, they can be strict or streaming. So we're just really interested in strict text messages. And for anything else, we've chosen just to ignore them. And here you can see parse messages just uses the JSON parser to turn these text messages into JSON, into events, and then gets them. It'll throw an exception if the parsing fails. So this graph component, it's a flow from message to event. We'll be composing that with our sync of event and some other stuff that we haven't seen. Right, so here's where we do this, a lot of the composition. So using flow from sync and source, all that does is just take a seemingly disconnected sync and source, combine them to make a flow, and, so, and that flow contains uh, parse messages and then source queue, or right. So anything, every message coming into that flow will be sent to parse messages and then sent to the uh, source queue sync. And then there's source.maybe, which never actually emits anything that's used just to keep the connection open on the other side. 
Right. Uh, so now we need a flow to handle incoming requests. That's routes. Um, seems like about, about eight more minutes, but it should be enough. Uh, so all it does, this is a bit of um, spray routing DSL stuff that's not really, that's kind of out of scope for the talk, but there's an implicit converter from that to a flow of HTTP request to HTTP response. And we're just using that, as I said earlier, to create basically a server that's really just a flow from request to response. So we run that, and then when we get our server, that is passed to HTTP bind and handle. And the reason we have to use the source queue and all this complicated stuff instead of just creating a more complex graph that handles merging is because we don't actually have control over the materialization of the, of the WebSocket handler flow. It's this, meth this method provided by ACA HTTP um, responds to any requests to the WS path with an attempt to promote that to a WebSocket connection using the WebSocket handler flow to handle every message. Right, and I'm just using a simple front end page. All that does is send one thing per, per uh, second, one test message with a random client ID and a timestamp, and a Kafka listener that I'll be running in parallel that just uh, logs the messages from Kafka. Right, so we're running the streaming upload server, and we're running the Kafka listener, and I also ran the stream the load test in the background, so there's some messages in Kafka it hasn't seen yet. Let's hit localhost a few times. And uh, so the page is incredibly simple. It doesn't actually have anything except JavaScript. But you can see on the console that it's repeatedly sending messages. And you can also see on Kafka that it is repeatedly receiving messages. So the purpose of the load test, though, is like this is this is kind of cool, right? Like I made like a toy project. I'm kind of wanted to. I was curious to see how many uh, how many concurrent connections it could handle. Like whether this is something that I would like use to demo something, or whether this is something that could actually stand up to like production loads. Uh, so this load tester, uh, it uses It uses uh, the WebSocket client flow, also provided by HTTP. I've omitted the full load tester code, and this actually is going to be running for a few minutes, so it's the perfect time to ask questions. You can see here that this log shows all the WebSocket connections that have been accepted, and here it will um, log how many messages it sent and how many it received. All right, so this is kind of my experiment in fitting a more complex thing in a lightning talk and glossing over a lot of how it actually works, or the uh, deeper... Um, Things about how ACA streams work, how materializers work. Uh, what questions do people have? Is there anything I can write? So here we can see it said uh, 605536 events and received 605536 events. So the load test sends messages via WebSocket to the server and then listens to Kafka for those messages and upon receiving all of them terminates. So we can see like it was able to send six, uh, 60,000 messages within a reasonably short time span, not just like one or two. I believe I have about four minutes left. If anyone has any questions, anything I glossed over that I shouldn't have. So either I did really well or no one understood what I was talking about. Cool.